You were spectacular in this movie. My goodness. What a nice thing to say. Um, you know, honestly. And you're right. Yeah. yeah, I just call him as I see him. But really, like, the one thing about this, this whole story is you're just sitting there the whole time going, no way. This is unbelievable. Was that your first kind of initial reaction? Yeah, reading the book, that was my exact reaction. I mean, the book, it, it just, it's, it's jaw-dropping. I mean, that you can't believe this, it, that it's a true story and this actually happened. Um, and so the trick of the movie was to, was to kind of make this guy the center of the story and, and kind of turn him into like a, an unreliable narrator where you know, suddenly you start to become aware, wait a minute, I have to reevaluate everything I've been told already because this narrator's not telling me the truth necessarily. Uh, and that's just a really fun thing to, as an actor to play. A guy who's lying, it's just, Stephen said it, he said, you go into a movie, it's fun to watch somebody lie when you know they're lying. And, uh, and, and that's kind of, you know, I guess the, the, fun, the fun, fun part of the movie. Yeah, and I love the voiceover aspect of it. Did you, now are you hearing things in your head, this whole voiceover thing? Yeah, well, what happens with the voiceover is we, when we made the movie, it just becomes addictive to you just start just making up, you know, monologues on your own because it's all stream of consciousness stuff. But, but Scott was, Scott is particularly geared somehow towards doing that. He, he, he wrote, you know, he, you know, he made all that stuff up, all, you know, all, all the interior monologue stuff, and, and uh, you know, we had to leave a bunch of it out. He would have three monologues for every one that made it into the movie, and he could just write them like that. And so sometimes Stephen would say, well, I think I'm going to be here, and I'm going to be able to shoot this, and Scott, you know, can, can we do a monologue for this? And Scott would go, yeah, I'll be right back. And he, like 45 minutes later, he'd come back with three options. You know, wow. they were all good. That's amazing for you, I would think, as an actor. Yeah, and, 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 and uh, yeah, and, and, well, look. Anytime you get a great script, it's I mean, it's such a gift, you know, as, as an actor. And and we had seven years with this mm -hmm. one, so we wait, you know, we had all this time to uh, think about it. And Stephen and I worked together three times during that seven years. And Scott and I worked together. Scott was one of the writers on the Born Ultimatum, so so you know, I had like a lot of contact with both of those guys during that time. And we would, you know, revisit the script and you know call each other. Hey, I, I read the informant again. It's still really, really good. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so it changed very little once we got there. Um, okay, well, let's let's just you know call a spade a spade here, Matt. You're you're really truly not the sexiest man in the world in this film. But you know, Scott Bakula argued with me. He found you quite sexy. Scott has issues. Uh, Bakula. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I mean, it is, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, another one of those things as an actor that you, that I, I don't, I've never, I'd never been asked to do, you know, to put on weight and, and, uh, it's it just, there, there were so many little things. It was fun kind of putting the character together, all, all the external things like the, there's a, a, the wig I'm wearing there and, you know, the eyeglasses, there were cheek plumpers that I put in and there's a thing on the end of my nose that, that, uh, it's like a little prosthetic on the end of my nose that. Uh, because Steven's idea was um, that he wanted the guy to be, he wanted him to be doughy because he wanted him to be almost formless, like you couldn't define right. his, his, you know, where, where the edges were. He said, like, I don't want to see any hard edges. Um, it's kind of as a metaphor for, you know, a guy who you can't really tell when he's telling the truth. Yeah, you can't see where the boundaries are. Exactly. Now, I, I want to ask you, do you see Mark Whitaker as a hero, a villain, a bit of both? <coughs> uh, I certainly don't see him as a as a villain. I don't judge anybody in kind of a you know, uh, but I, I I think he did some things that were incredibly heroic, really courageous, um, and he shined a light on something that was happening that wouldn't have stopped if he hadn't done that. And uh, and he changed ultimately his what he did changed a lot of the laws and and uh, and and made these punishments harder for these corporate crimes. And 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 I think that's great. And uh, you know at the same time. He was dealing with mental health issues, yeah. and 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 he made mistakes that, you know, the guy ended up going to jail for nine years, and you know, paid his debt to society, and so no, I certainly would never see him as cast him as a villain. I I think, especially as an actor, when you play a part, you feel tremendous empathy for the person that you're playing, and you have to, yeah. um, or you shouldn't play the part, um, because every you know nobody casts himself as as, as a villain. Um, so so I I have a great amount of fondness for him and and think more about the great things that he did than than than, than the illegal ones. Yeah. yeah. Um, great cast in this. My goodness, you know, like you've been so lucky in, in your career, but wow, like let's just talk about working with somebody like Scott Bakula, veteran T V guy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. seriously. And it's also <clears throat> it was kind of a something that happened across the board in this movie was 
everyone felt really grateful for the role they were playing in the movie, whether it were, was the cast or were, were the people on the crew. Like Stephen, Stephen promoted basically a lot of people who weren't department heads on like the Oceans movies, but on a, on a twenty-two million dollar movie, suddenly those guys got bumped up and and and, and ran departments mm -hmm. and. And you know, and that's a, and that's a big deal. So everybody felt like, you know, I felt like this role was one of the greatest roles I'd ever been ha had a chance to play. It was I was so happy to be there. Scott, you know, hadn't had a great role in a movie in in a while, and he was just so, so like we would look at each other on the set, like you know, he believed this. This is, you know, and all the while you're working for Steven, which means you're everyone's put in a position to do their best work. The hours are aren't so long that you're just beating your head against the wall. You're, you're, you're really, everyone's focused and nobody, you know, you, you stand on the set all day because there's no time to go back to your trailer and you want to, you know, you don't want to leave. It's, it's, it, it really is a, a kind of a great group experience uh, with him. It's, it's one of the many reasons it's so fun to work with And Steven. Yeah, and, and I think brilliance on his part for, you know, throwing in some of these com you know, comedians in there and making it... Uh, yeah, and all but those Joel guys, McHale, yeah. like, how do you keep a straight face opposite Joel McHale? I didn't a lot of the time. I mean, th that was the thing. We hired... Uh, Stephen hired all these comedians. Scott and I and Melanie, who are the, you know, the three actors, we broke character more than anybody. Like, we were by far the least professional people on the set. And, and these guys came in and took their roles really, really seriously. Again, because they normally don't get roles like that. So everyone felt really... Grateful. I mean, Rick Overton and Tom Papa. You know, th those guys. I mean, I could I could barely get through a scene with those guys. Just, and not because they were doing any shtick or any stand-up, but because the, their insight into the characters they were playing. I mean, Rick was just like he's a mouth breather. I get it. You know, and he just the way he plays this guy, this kind of predatory corporate. I mean, it's just it's it's it was great. I, I learned a lot watching those guys. Um, you know, I was, I was saying to Scott, we were joking around about you because I go, where do we find the molds to make Matt Damon? You know, really are one of those perfect kind of guys. Like, you, you're such a good guy, seriously. And I, I want to know how you keep it together, and but also with your charity work right now, there's so much stuff that you're representing. Um, what right now is the closest to your heart in terms of getting the word out there? Well, we we just. Uh, started water.org uh, which H2O Africa merged with water partners and and so that you know clean water um, you know I've, I've gone just this year to Ethiopia and um, uh, India and, uh, and and we're gonna go to Haiti actually uh, 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 we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start some programs in Haiti uh, in the coming year and so it's it, that that's a great uh, thing water.org so anybody who wants is interested can go visit that website I'm I'm, I'm I'm really excited to be to be to be trying to raise awareness. Yeah, movie writing movie the Sahara was a phenomenal movie too. Like yeah, yeah, really, really yeah. Good. Well, that was the. I mean, I, you know, to, I love the festival, and I, you know, I haven't been here a lot. I, I usually come for the one by one event, um, which I'm here for again this year. And so, and <clears throat> one by one is is also connected to Water.org. So obviously, you know, I've had that relationship with them for years, and I, I love those guys over there, and they do a lot and raise a lot of money for for. Uh, for uh, kids who, who, who really need it. And we have President Clinton coming this year. So. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Matt, great. best of luck to you with everything. Thanks, this is Bonnie. so good. We, you know, pick out your nice tux for the Oscars because we will be seeing <laughs> there nicer, okay? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you.